today we are making one of my favorite springtime dishes in Rome. It's lamb, I call it Milanese, so it's lamb chops fried. We're going to use uh, a rack today. I'll show you, we'll cut into chops, we're going to butterfly it, pound it out, bread it, pan fry it, and serve it with this beautiful watercress shaved ubriaco cheese, which is a drunken cheese. It's, it's, it's macerated with the wine pressings of uh, the winemaking process, and it has this beautiful fruity flavor that goes great with the lamb, some beautiful tomatoes, and I'm making a black olive vinaigrette that I want to start with. So here we have balsamic vinegar. It's a cup of balsamic vinegar, and I have it to a simmer. I'm going to put a pinch of salt, a little freshly cracked pepper, the vinegar is boiling, and then I put a quarter cup of honey, and the honey sweetens it up and adds some viscosity after it reduces. So the goal here is to reduce it by half, right? So if we start with a cup of vinegar, I'm going to go to reduce it to about a half cup total volume of vinegar. While this is reducing our sauce, I'm gonna show you the lamb. So here's a rack of lamb. This is beautiful. And we have four, five, six, we have eight racks. So what we're going to do is I'll show you, this is a beautiful eye, that's called the eye, and the fat is nicer, I leave the fat, okay? If it has more fat, if you have lamb, sometimes you'll get lamb that has much more of a fat cap, you would just trim it off. All right, so cutting the lamb, you can see how the bones are, the anatomy, they go straight down. They've trimmed off the chine bone, which is the backbone, which is attaches it to the spine, which is good. If it was there, you wouldn't be able to cut through it or you need a cleaver, so we're not gonna need a cleaver today. So I'm just going to cut. When you cut, look at the eye, this is this, the loin, and you're just gonna stay even. You don't need to follow the bones, follow the meat, meaning do cuts of meat the way you want them, not follow the bones, or else you'll, you'll cut crooked and then you'll have uneven pieces, which is what you don't want. So I'm just going to cut straight through each chop, just like that. See how easy this is? This is no big deal. Here's what we're gonna do. You can do these two ways and I'm gonna show you. I'm going to butterfly these along the bone like this. So I'm gonna put them on the side. I'm gonna line up my blade with the bone and I'm, I'm butterflying these, right? So it's just I'm cutting open the eye. And this is called the butterfly, right? And then what we'll do is we're gonna pound these out. We can pound some of these like this. A couple like this. You can see the sauce here. See, how, see the bubbles are getting bigger? That means it's getting thicker. It's getting more viscosity, right? All right, so now we're going to pound the lamb out. I have a, a mallet here and a cutting board. You want to call it solid cutting board with a towel, a moist towel underneath. You should always work with a moist towel underneath so it doesn't slide. And you want a, a solid surface. So we're going to take some plastic wrap. This is a chef trick. And we're going to line the board with plastic wrap so that the meat will pound smoothly and not tear and not stick to your cutting board. Because if you pound it directly on the cutting board, it'll stick. I'm going to take this, put these this way. These are the butterfly chops, all right? Lay them here, lay them all out. Now, another piece goes right on top, just like this. This way you won't tear the top of the meat. And now, you just wanna pound them until we're making them spread out so when they fry they cook evenly, so that they cook evenly, so. This is good. And that's what we want. It's, okay. So I like using the flat side because I feel that the teeth tear it up too much, right? So each side of the bone on the butterfly, just a little bit. We're not, we don't need to do a lot, okay? You don't need to destroy it. But look how pretty that is, right? See that? If you're worried about the fat, you can trim some off, but I love fat and I'm going to leave it on because there's so much flavor there. When you fry it, it's so delicious and adds so much depth of flavor. I like a little fat on there. If you, by all means, if you're going to take the fat off, take it off before you pound them, just trim more fat off, that's it. But I suggest you leave the flavor. Okay, beautiful chops. Look at that. These are gorgeous, okay. Now, look at the sauce. So see this? You can see it's getting thicker here. So it's getting nice and viscous, which is what we want, right? And as this cools, 
So the sauce, you can serve it hot. I like it room temp or a little bit on the cooler side because I like it to, uh, I like it better that way. I think it has more flavor. So as this cools, it'll, thick, it'll thicken up even longer because of the natural sugar in the vinegar plus the honey, right? So now at this point, I'm gonna let it reduce a little bit more. So, lamb, let's do this. We're gonna do a lamb and I'm gonna season it with salt. Freshly ground black pepper. All right, that's that. Now, our sauce is there. So see this? That's what we want, these big bubbles, and you can tell it's getting thick. It's reduced, it's viscous, it's thick. I have some beautiful fresh rosemary, like a tablespoon, teaspoon, whatever, how much you want. These are pitted olives that I had. You can use green, black. I prefer black because they're richer. Rinse the brine off the olives. It doesn't taste good. So put, just rinse them quickly with water and then chop them up. So I would suggest Kalamatas or any Italian black olive or oil cured Moroccan olives I love in this dish as well. So we're just gonna stir these in. These get stirred in, oh my God, this aroma of the olives and the rosemary is just intoxicating. Now, I have some great tux, so it's a vinaigrette, right? So we have all this vinegar, we have some sugar, it's a little sweet, there's some salt and pepper, uh, the rosemary and the olives, but I like, so it's not a two to one or three to one ratio of vinaigrette, which is a typical vinaigrette. This has a lot of sugar, it's already reduced and rich. We don't need to offset the, the acidity that much, so I'm just putting a drizzle, so it's not a two to one ratio, so don't make this like a normal vinaigrette, and I'm just gonna, I'm not even whisking it, I wanna spoon in because I don't like it totally emulsified. And this is just more for perfume and balance, right? And that's it, that's all I'm gonna do. And this is a great peppery Tuscan olive oil that I love. So here's the, the vinaigrette, it's thick and viscous. You can see it's almost standing up on the plate. And the olive oil, that's, I don't want it fully blended in there. I want the olive oil separate because you want to get catch those different flavors and that contrast. The olives are so rich with the balsamic and they really suck up that flavor, they're like meaty. And with the aroma of the rosemary, it's really divine. Oh my God. So simple, but so amazingly good. So now let's bread these chops. I have my eggs. Here we go. I season the lamb chops. It's just a habit. I like to season the eggs a little bit too. Not a lot, just a little bit. Even the meat, the eggs, I season everything. Here we are. So we're gonna do the chop this way. You wanna make sure you get flour all over it. Dust it well. Dip in the egg, right? Plenty all over it. And then, again, plenty of breadcrumbs, and we're just going to cover them. Now with the chops, I'm breading them. You'll see I have a lot of breadcrumbs, and you wanna work with a lot of breadcrumbs when you're breading items. And you can, your breadcrumbs, if you like, you can save them, save them in the refrigerator in case there's any egg particles, right? So there's bacteria that grows. Here's the chop, press it down and you wanna make sure that it's breaded really well. Now, when I do the breadcrumbs, I use, I like to use half panko and half fine breadcrumbs, and they could be Italian breadcrumbs, Italian seasoning, whatever you like. I just have plain ones in here and with panko, and I use the plain ones because they seal everything up and you get a nice crisp, consistent coating all over the product, and I like the crunch of the panko as well, but I don't want all panko or all fine crumbs, or else it's too fine of a crunch, or too crunchy of a crunch, if that's even possible. So as I go, I'm putting these in, I pull some bread up, I'm making a pocket for the meat, and then I dump some breadcrumbs on it, right? And I bury it somewhat, and then I'm giving it a little bit of a press. I like to press it into the meat, because I can take it, and I like to, it to adhere really well. So you can see that's really well adhered. That's it, let's fry these. Oil's nice and hot. I have a blend here. I just have vegetable oil. I put about 20%, 80-20, 20% extra virgin olive oil. I like the flavor, but you, I don't like to fry in pure olive oil. And it has a low smoking point. That means if you got it to 350, 375, it's gonna burn the oil. It'll have this off grassy, kind of burnt grass smell, which isn't ideal. So I just put a little bit for that perfume. And let's fry these. And you just make sure your oil's nice and hot. So I tested this, and I'm at 360 degrees right now. And the, the key is, as you add chops, you're gonna cool the pan down. So you wanna bring the heat underneath it up higher. 
right? So even though you're at temp, I'm, I'm cranking the heat up underneath it because I want it to recover. The oil recovery is this. So you put product that's cold into hot oil, you're going to naturally bring the temperature down. So what I'm doing is putting heat, more heat underneath it to bring the temperature back up faster, hence the term recovery. This is what you want. So again, I know that some of you may enjoy your lamb like your steak, medium rare. But this way, you're not gonna get a temperature out of it. We pounded these nice and thin, so you're not going to get medium rare, right? And I guarantee that once you eat these, you're not gonna say, boy, I wish that was medium rare or medium. It's not gonna matter. They're gonna be cooked through. They'll still be pink in the center, but they're not gonna be rare or medium rare. Look how gorgeous that is, All right? And round two, I, I have my pan up, so my oil's recovered. It's ready for the next round. I can go right into it now. If you put your second round in and you see the bubbles slowing down, you're not hearing a lot of music in this oil, that means slow down, wait a minute, then add the rest of your chops or whatever you're frying so that the oil recovers. So arrange them on your platter. These are almost done. Again, it's this fast, so you fry them and you're ready to go. Can you do these ahead of time? You can, I, I wouldn't suggest it, maybe an hour ahead of time, but not much more. And if you do, put them in your oven with a convection fan on like 300, 350, just to crisp them up. But I would suggest just frying these and eating them at the moment as that's when they're best, right? These are beautiful. Okay, so drain them off, a little more salt. Look at that, arrange them on a platter or individually as you wish. I just put these on the table for everyone. And these are like, this is a variation of a watercress that I love. It's called upland cress or watercress or peppercress or whatever. Okay. And then I put some nice tomatoes. Throw these, put these around nicely. These are beautiful flavors. It's like, you know, a salad with the lamb. Okay, now, ubraco cheese, and I have a Japanese mandolin, and I just put this right on top. If you're not comfortable doing that, you can just do it right on your board here. And then here we go, here's the cheese, and then our vinaigrette. Toss it around and you're gonna take the olive vinaigrette. And just like that. Here it is, lamb chops milanese with shaved ubriaco cheese and a balsamic olive and rosemary vinaigrette. Let's give these crispy lamb chops a try. Oh my God, you hear that crunch? It's awesome. Gotta get some olives, a little tomato to cheese, everything in a bite. Truly amazing. I can't wait for you to make this recipe. Let me know what you think.